Today we are chatting about Hallmark's new movie, A Safari Romance, and here is the synopsis. Megan Henry, a down-to-earth wildlife biologist working on a project that will foster protection of wildlife in Africa, is forced to team up with a theme park designer, Tim Erickson, who wants to create an over-the-top safari attraction. That's a synopsis, and again, we say don't judge a movie by the synopsis because... Was she forced to team up with him? I don't know if she was forced. It he had to like drive was... the safari jeep. Yeah, it also seems like she's increasingly willing to be around him as the movie goes on, but I'm getting ahead of myself here, so let's just go. So fun fact, this movie was filmed at, I'm going to butcher the name, Mabula Game Lodge in South Africa. So they actually shot it on location, and we say kudos to Hallmark. Come on, budge. <laughs> that's the rest of the budge for the year I'm exactly. to see what, what sacrifices we will have to pay for <laughs> to award the South African safari but you know what I was here for it I loved it so uh, we open on our leading lady who is perfectly curled hair and she's photographing some lions in a field then we see Tim who's played by Andrew Walker he arrives on a private jet and is immediately taken on a safari ride where they encounter a giraffe and he gives the riveting commentary of quote it's a giraffe right there. <laughs> I've made note of the same thing. The way he says it is just like, oh, this is what this movie is going to be? Okay. We're in for a DZ. So, but to be honest, that's probably what I would say as well. Who am I to judge? Okay. Then he's re- greeted by Mama Nosy, who owns this retreat lodge thing, I guess. Looks pretty nice to me. Yeah. And they do a traditional handshake, or at least they try to, but he ends up trying to, like, thumb wrestle her. <laughs> I did laugh out loud at that because it was very awkward, and Super. it did seem a little improv Um, Darius is tagging along with Tim, and he's the videographer, and he is from Cape Town, so he's happy to be back in Africa. Megan's the ranger, okay? So she's working part-time and trying to get through school. She's a workaholic, as are all the leading ladies. We just, us gals take on too much, more than we can handle, I guess. Always. Tim is staying at um, the lodge, and he has plans for an amusement park attraction, which I guess is why he's there. It sounded like he was trying to get footage and study the animals and how they interact so he can make robotic animals on some safari ride. And I wanted to be like, yo, Andrew Walker, ever been to Disney World? Been there, done that. I know. I've been to Animal Kingdom. They have real animals on their safari ride or Jungle Cruise at Magic Kingdom, animatronic animals. Seriously, the premise of this was a little wonky. I think they could have found a better reason for him to have been traveling to South Africa. I don't know. It was thin. It was a thin premise for sure. So we meet Megan's friend Kamara and Kamara and Darius have heart eyes flying everywhere and they go to dinner together and... Tim and Megan have a little meet cute because he's admiring her photography. And Okay, Megan is talking to Tim and she breaks it to them that there are no fences around and the animals can roam wherever they like and the boys freak out a tad. They are on the safari jeep ride getting acquainted with the land. They blurred out some logo on the safari jeep. Did you see that? I did, yeah, weird. It's jarring and weird. The boys have a drone so they bust it out. And it's really putting a thorn in Megan's side. Evidently, it's illegal to use a drone in the reserve. And then Megan and Tim get into a little scuffle about the legality of the drone. And the boys lose. She's like, look, if you want me to take you around and see all the animals and the greatness, the drone has got to go. And they accept this. But that's not all we'll hear about the drone. So stay tuned. Mm. The next day, Megan takes the boys around and they spot a giraffe again to Tim's great pleasure. Megan and Tim share an iced tea on the veranda, and they want you to know it's iced tea, and they learn more about each other. She's getting her PhD in ethology, which is the study of animal behavior, and she takes him on a walking safari where, yes, they see more giraffes. And I'm beginning to think giraffes may be the only animal on this reserve. I mean, at this point, I'm surprised the giraffes weren't listed as extras in this movie. (laughs) (laughs) Giraffe A, giraffe B. Exactly. Played by Giraffe A, Giraffe B, Giraffe C. (laughs) Jeffrey. What are some other giraffe names? Exactly, Jeffrey. (laughs) He's the Toys R Us giraffe. Are there any other famous giraffes in pop culture? Can't think of any. 
Uh, we're going to kick ourselves later. Listeners, let us know on our socials. What's your favorite pop culture giraffe? Who would Please. you like to see in the next Hallmark Safari movie? <laughs> Um, so Tim and Megan go to a little jaunt to a South African school that Mama Nosy has invested in. And um, then they go to a barbecue with traditional dance. So you're really getting a lot of the South Africa culture and vibes sprinkled in through the movie, which I did appreciate. I did, but I did have a bit of a problem here. with. So we're getting this beautiful scene and it's tribal dancing and drumming and the whole thing. And then, of course, they get pulled into it. And it is awkward at best the way that they're trying to dance with these people. It is it is every suburban wedding you've ever been to ever. <laughs> Very robotic. Very. A lot of hands. A lot Lots of, of hand hands. work going on. Awkward robotic <laughs> hands. If you aren't watching the YouTube video, check it out. <laughs> We're always giving you reason. Gift. We're always giving you special reason. Special gift from me to you with my reenactments. <laughs> That's right. So then can we cue some like villainous music here? Because we get the villain of the movie. Dun, dun, dun. Amy. Amy. Yeah. She shows up totally out of nowhere. It's like we're coming back from commercial break and all of a sudden this woman just shows up. I write in my notes, out of nowhere, some woman named Amy shows up. Tim apparently knows her. Megan's sad to see them having lunch. And apparently now Amy is what? Tim's boss? Is that what's happening here? Amy's daddy just bought Tim's company, and she's running the theme park division. Of course she is. And yes, now she's his <laughs> boss. So they all go on safari, and Amy wants Tim to be in the water with elephants behind him for, like, some press shoot, I guess, some, some publicity. And Megan has to plop her in her place because it's not safe. And Amy is not a fan of Megan. No, no, no. There are daggers. Pew, pew. Yeah. Yeah. Every idea Amy has, Megan shooting down for one reason or another, for good reason. So then later, the four, the Fab Four go out without Amy to explore, and they see a leopard, which is all fun and games, until they get a flat tire. Mm. Luckily, the girls know how to be independent women. They change the tire, and all is right in the world again. But it turns out there are poachers on the land. But it's not animal poachers. It's Amy and her dad. They're trying to poach Tim away from his other division or something i got confused with this because if they bought the firm he worked for why are they trying to lure him in so amy can be with him more directly i think Was that's that the, the inference here because we learn a couple scenes prior that amy and tim dated something like 10 years ago and i think amy basically told her dad that she wanted to be with Tim, and so he is sort of helping to orchestrate this whole scenario that he might be closer to her professionally, and hopefully, yeah, your facial expression right now is pretty much the facial expression I had, which is basically, icky. yeah. Icky, icky and sticky, icky. and my nose did not appreciate it. Do not like. Insert an elephant parade here, and then, moving on, Amy tries to convince Darius to use the drone to, wouldn't it be great to get some drone footage while we're here? It would be so unfortunate if we couldn't. Now, Megan had already told her, no, nah, girl. But Amy's like, come on, Darius. What's a little drone footage? Who cares? And this is when she gets her real villain status, I guess. Cut to Kamara becomes an official ranger at a fancy dinner where there is a lot of toasting happening. And I paused the movie to go get a snacky. And I said, wait, we are just now halfway through this movie. Right. Oh, my gosh. Well, you missed. I've got this note oh, no. in mind. Apparently, Megan's camera keeps breaking throughout this whole thing. And so she's out with Tim on a one-on-one -on -one romantic safari. Tim lets her use his camera. And there's this really tender moment. They almost kiss. And then out of nowhere, ba -bum, a CGI cheetah pops up on the hood of her truck. <laughs> <laughs> I can't yeah. take credit for that. That's what Lauren, my wife, called it. She was like, look at that CGI cheetah that just popped up there. <laughs> CGI cheetah. <laughs> it sounds very fancy. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're definitely falling in love, I guess, is what we're led to believe. Mm -hmm. So after commercial break, Amy corners Megan and instills a ton of doubt in her mind about Tim, and a drone flies overhead near the hyena den when they're out getting some photos and 
uh oh, not the drone again. Megan's ticked. Goes back to the what would you call it? The reserve? The lodge. Resort reserve lodge. Lodge is a good word for it. Yeah. She goes to the lodge, guns ablazing. Turns out it's registered to Tim, and evidently now Megan could lose her ranger license since he is a guest of hers. What? And Mama knows he's like, yeah, well, I knew he brought the drone. He's the only one that has brought the drone. Well, then why did you let him bring the drone? Mama Nosy. Thank you. I wrote in my notes, is this really going to be the oopsie doodle in this movie? Really? This is what we're doing? Anyway, mm-hmm. I digress. Well, we'll stay tuned, listener, because it gets even better. It doesn't, really. That, that's pretty much the oopsie doodle. Hmm. So she said, it seems like it shouldn't be Megan's fault, but here we are. She corners Tim, they get into a scuffle, and she has to confiscate his drone, and this is the officially the most I've ever talked about a drone, period, ever, period. She goes to Darius and talks to him, and he didn't do it. And so later, Megan and team, Tim make up, and he says, hands down, you're the greatest person I've ever known. Sir. Sir. You, sir. You just met her. Sir. You've been there two weeks, maybe? Is that what? Two or three weeks tops? Sir. Slow down. <laughs> Slow your roll. Or get better friends. I mean, she's not bad, but like, she's the greatest person you've ever met? Who are you? Well, he's hanging around with Amy, that's why. Well, that's exactly right. If that's his taste in friends and or romance partners, then of course she would be the best he's ever known. She but I mean, step up. Still, anywho. At this point, I was distracted because she is wearing one small jaw clip in her hair and it does not look sufficient to hold her whole lot of hair. Like there was a whole voluminous hair thing going on in a tiny jaw clip. And I just think I'm I'm not into the movie magic. Okay, I want some real, give me the real deal, Hallmark. That needs a bigger jaw clip to cover that much estate. Well, while we're on her appearance, I don't know if you noticed this, but Lauren and I did. So she starts out and she looks like this very sort of homebody park ranger. And so every outfit she has is some variation of a park ranger short and a shirt. But mm-hmm. about a halfway through the movie, all of a sudden she goes out on safari after safari after safari and she forgets that she's supposed to wear this ranger outfit and she starts wearing yeah. everything that you might find at like a casual corner in South Africa. Yeah. It's very sort of... <laughs> some jewel tones are sneaking exactly. in, some lace, <laughs> some doily appliques are sneaking in. Well, I guess because she wasn't officially taking other people out. Maybe that's how. Well, still... She had her hair curled in the first scene, so she always cared about her appearance. Mm. But it is definitely upped. Yes, yes, it is. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, they go to a market and they get each other matching bracelets to prove to us all how in sync they are with one another. <laughs> they get back from the market and Megan sees um, Kamira and Darius and dun, 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 Darius did fly the drone, all caps, mystery solved. He came clean to Megan and said, Amy didn't make me do it, but she just suggested it and I did it because I didn't want to lose my job. The power this villain has over him. Mm. So now Amy and Daddy want to hire Tim as a business partner to promote him. He'll get more money. He'll be working more directly with her. How convenient. She already has her own people, so he'd have to ditch his team. (laughs) Which means Darius. Yeah, poor Darius. And he's not really sure he wants to do that. Megan and Tim go on a date and hold hands. Things are heating up, I suppose. Then Darius confesses to Tim, it was me. I used the drone. And Tim looks at Megan and she's smiling like, oh, I'm so glad he told you. And Tim's like, it's okay. This is all Amy's fault. (laughs) You didn't make this choice yourself, Darius. I know. And Darius is like, no, no, no. Like, Amy didn't make me do it. I just, she mentioned it. And she mentioned it to everybody. I was just the one that did it. And he's like, no, no. Amy, Mm. villain status. And he stomps so for Amy and gets mad. And he quits his job. (laughs) And Amy leaves abruptly, and this is all very extreme. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was extreme for her to be there in the first place. She's just like, right. oh, I just jaunted over just to see, say hi to you. And then he very extremely just decides to quit when she reveals herself to be absolutely awful. <laughs> so, But she wasn't really that awful. She was annoying. She was a little awful. But I wish... And maybe this is a later conversation, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. 
I wish they would have made her full villain. If you're going to be a villain, let's do a few more little things around. Like, let's try to get Megan fired. Let's let's go full Claire St. Clair if you're going to do it. I'll yeah. bread. If you're going to be. Give me a villain. Let's go. Claire St. Clair it. <laughs> Anyways. Over a safari dinner, Tim says he doesn't want them to end. And she says their lives are too different. They both can't live their dreams if they're together. She doesn't see how it's possible. She cries watching him leave. Now, now, they're both going back to America. Yeah. Different parts of America. But... And maybe it's that's not like, what, as two long, hours away? Yeah. Not as long distance as we're making it out to be, but okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mama Novi says that the complaint against Megan has been withdrawn, thank God, and to follow her heart, and Tim left her a package. It's a camera and a framed photo of them together that I don't know who took it. It was them at the market with their matching bracelets. We don't... Well, we didn't see that happen. He left the white lion photo so she can finish her research because I guess that's what she was focused on was the white lions. And they found some earlier. I didn't mention that because it didn't really matter. But there you go. And then (laughs) she boards the plane to go back to America as she was always going to do anyways. And the guy awkwardly standing by the plane as she boards is grade A comedy. (laughs) That's like If we could ever be extras, that's all I want. But he was very (laughs) serious about his non-speaking role standing by a plane. It was this very sort of, I'm a flight attendant on a private airline, and I want you to know how seriously I take my job. And she does this thing. She walks up the steps, and then she just wistfully looks back in the distance and takes this long, glaring look. And this this poor extra of a flight attendant is just... He's just standing there. Like he is a guard at the the palace. (laughs) I know. Seriously. If this were Southwest, he'd be like, ma'am, ma'am, find your seat, find your seat, ma'am, keep on moving. Or he'd be like, welcome to the plane on Southwest, we're zany and we like to sing. (laughs) Here's some pretzels, find a seat. Seriously, please get out of the aisle, yeah. Yeah, golly. Okay, if you thought it was over, it's not. Because I needed to mention, she was going back to America anyways to finish her thesis. This was not chasing Tim, so they're not talking. They not broke up because they were never together, but she was leaving separately. Two months later, Kamara shows up to visit Darius for a few weeks and surprises Megan at her office because I don't know what she does, but she has a nice office doing whatever she does. And Kamara takes her to a big open room. <laughs> Tim scares the ever living out of her. We, we rewound this part three times, thrice. We rewound it because he goes, Megan, and she goes, Tim, and she jolts as though she's never seen this man before. Mm. And she doesn't jump when a cheetah lands on her car, but Tim, I guess, really just did the jump scare. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's a big blank room. And we see, he was like, this is how you should present your thesis. And it's all the footage that they have shot when they they were together. And it is the most bogus green screen simulation nonsense that I've ever seen. And they literally have halos around them because, oh, Josh, could you... Photoshop Safari footage behind us. <laughs> or that too much. I'll see what I can, I can do. It. do. I'll do it in a still image if nothing else. Okay, hold on. I'll see what I can do, and I'm sure it'll take still a, be. A I'm. All right, it looks scared like there's a lion coming at us. Okay, that's going to be our. I'll work on that. I can at least Photoshop a still image. It was terrible. It was awful. So it turns out Tim got a new job with old his old staff doing immersive experiences in exotic locations. He can travel wherever she needs to go for her research. And what else is she researching besides these white lions? Is she going to go other places? I don't know. I really they don't promise. care at this point. Yeah. <laughs> they promise to do whatever it takes to make it work. They kiss. And then Darius had a trick up his sleeve. He projected fireworks in their room on the CGI screens. It's at this point, Jennifer, that my wife utters, because his big line here is he says, you can never go wrong with fireworks. And my wife goes, until you do. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, Tim does joke and say, I told Darius I didn't want fireworks. <laughs> then you think that's it? No. Nope. We get a one month later. So this is now three months after they left Africa. And we get terrible visuals again. Behind Megan, she's in a purple suit giving her thesis to a whole room of snuffy people. 
And he walks up. They're clapping at the end. Oh, they're clapping. She says, I dedicate it to my mom. They're clapping. They're clapping. He kisses her in front of the entire team. An elephant trumpets. And that's it. Okay, it's time for our gold or coal segment where we each give three gifts. If there is more gold, we are taking a walk on the wild side. And if there's more coal, it's the lion sleeps tonight. And so do we. <laughs> And if it's ties, just meh. Josh, I'm coming to you first. All right. So it's going to be some gold for me out of the gate. The scenery is pretty beautiful. I'm glad that they spent the money and went to South Africa. If they're going to do a safari romance, it had to be in a place that was a safari. They couldn't go to some zoo somewhere and pretend that they were doing this in South Africa and they knew it. And it was beautiful. We got some great sunsets. We got plenty of cute animals. I thought it was really pretty agreed since you took my first piece of gold i'm gonna have to go with coal out of the gate i didn't feel like they had any chemistry between them did you romantic wise no i liked them individually as characters yeah i didn't really like them as a couple yes agreed i i didn't buy it i thought they were friends who flirted but the progression, I mean, I know these people always fall in love really quickly in these movies, but like it just didn't add up to me at all. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Cole. I'm going to give some Cole. The plot was just really shaky. The whole fact that the drone thing was the biggest point of conflict in this entire thing was just weak sauce. It could have been a lot more conflict driven than it was. It just felt like we went on a series of drives with these two characters and every once and again a drone showed up and that was something that they could get upset about. And it was like, ah, oh, come on. So some coal for me. Yeah, I have coal as well. It was very choppy. Like like I said, I paused halfway through and I was like, oh, it's not even halfway over yet because it just was, like you said, it was a lot of scenes, a lot of vignettes, a lot of we're going here and we're going to go here and we're going to go there. But it didn't really string together very well for me to keep me interested other than we had to watch it this is our journalistic duty a journal in the integrity of the pod comes above all else my last piece of coal is this ending is (laughs) bonkers the green screen of it all the theatrics the fact that apparently tim is sort of maybe in the same city where Darius is and she is like Darius is in the same city it just none of it makes sense it's weird we get no sort of understanding of why she's at this fancy office dressed like a million dollars all of us just no the ending was weird and bonkers and I did not like it it was really thrown together I did like when they were in the big room I was like oh they're gonna put the projections of the video I like that idea the execution is what got me like the CGI of it all. I I almost wish they could have just like inserted footage and made it look, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm talking in circles at this point, but I liked the idea behind it as a romantic gesture, but yeah, it didn't make sense. Uh, My last piece of coal. I wish they'd made Amy more of a villain. Let's villain her up. Make me really not like her. I was just thought she was annoying, but she was never really a villain. To me. Yeah, she didn't like Megan, so she should have done something to undermine Megan or trip her up or ruin her research or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because it's tr- I just kicked my camera. Sorry, <laughs> um, because she didn't make Darius do it. She didn't threaten his job. She encouraged him to go take drone shots, but it wasn't. Even she was like, "I didn't follow up on that," you know. So yeah. it was pretty weak. Oh, so, bottom line, we had one gold. Five pieces of coal. So I guess the lion sleeps tonight and so do we. Final thoughts. It bums me out because Andrew Walker is one of my favorites. And I really liked Brittany Bristow. I've seen her as kind of like B characters in some movies. I've never seen one of her A character movies, I guess. Um, I like them individually. I like them as actors. I like them, like you said, their characters. It just didn't all add up for me. Same here. About you? It was beautiful. I felt like it was a tourism postcard for South Africa, but the story was just weak 
and not enough material for them to really work with, I thought. So. Uh, agreed. Yeah. And that, friends, is another episode of Do You Watch What I Watch? Special thanks to Nick Schwartz, as always, for our theme song and to you for listening. Hey, if you like our podcast, be sure to tell a friend, review, subscribe. We're also on Facebook and Instagram, so be sure to give us a follow. You can leave a comment and connect with us. Find links to all of our social stuff on our website at doyouwatchwhatiwatch.com. On our next episode, we'll be chatting about a new Hallmark movie, Love, and the Great Smoky Mountains, colon, a national park romance. And since we are based out of Middle Tennessee, the Great Smoky Mountains are near and dear to our hearts, so we can't wait to talk about it. Here's the synopsis from IMDb. Former sweethearts reunite at an archaeological dig in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. As they work together competing for the same research grant, they discover they might still have feelings for one another. We will have much to discuss, but until then... May your days be merry and bright. We'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.